Hey everybody, this video is going to show you how to find the minimum sample size for a confidence interval. Now it's important when you're designing a, an experiment that you're taking a large enough sample. If the sample is too small, then your result, results will not be accurate. And if it's too big, well, you're just wasting, wasting your resources. So that's what we're going to learn about here. So I have an example here of a Gallup poll. They, they uh, surveyed 1,005 people and they got a 76% uh, positive or success rate. And so that 76% is p hat. And then q hat, as always, is 1 minus that. The confidence level that they want is 95%. And the margin of error is 3%. Now, if you look over here at our formula, well, they gave us p hat and q hat, so we can we use those to find n. They also gave us the error. What we don't have is this z-score. We need that in order to find the minimum sample. And so we're going to need uh, to use alpha for that. And this time we're going to have to do something a little extra. We're going to divide it by 2. So we're going to take 1 minus the confidence level. That gives us alpha and then divide that by two. Now that value that we just got is actually the area under the normal curve. And I need the z-score for that area. And so we did that previously in the same unit using the inverse normal function. Now this is a standard normal, so I'm gonna choose norm.s.inverse. And the probability is that alpha score divided by two. It's actually, this should say divided by 2. And there's my z-score. So now I have everything that I need in this formula. I just need to have Excel calculate it for me. So equals p hat times q hat times, and then I'm going to plug in some parentheses here, z-score divided by the error. And then I'm going to square that. And one way of doing that is use this hat on the six key on my keyboard and then the exponent two. And when I hit enter, I will have the minimum sample size. So I've got 778.5. Now, even if that had been 778.2, I would always round this up to 779 because we always want to err on the side of a higher value, because remember, this is people that we would be uh, surveying. And so we're always going to round up no matter whether the mathematical rounding rules tell me to round down. Now, one other thing to note is occasionally you will see an example where maybe they don't have an estimate for p hat and q hat. And so if they don't give you a value here, you will just use 0.5 for both of these. That gives us the maximum possible value for the product of p hat times q hat. And so again, we're erring on the side of caution here by using those values if we don't have anything uh, given to us. And you can see when I do that, it makes for a much larger sample. So ideally we would have a p hat and a q hat value to plug in.